welcome, welcome, Couch Beers Tribe. We're back. <sighs> this is like episode 307 or something. Yeah. <clears throat> We've been doing it for a couple of years now. Yep. Is this on? Check, check. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're good. Mm. Fun mm. fact, I think this is the, the first week we haven't had uh, uh, fact checkers since we really? invited people to do that. So. Wow. The we first were, after the first guest, we don't have any fact checkers. We had three people. We were one hundred percent factual. The entire episode. That sounds one hundred percent accurate. Yeah, it's the only explanation. Uh, I had a bunch of people tell me they really liked having Brad on, including Brad himself. So he Is that w- after he, he listened to it, or he did. He went back and listened <laughs> to it. He told me. I like that. I I didn't listen to it. I should have. You didn't listen to it? No, I didn't listen Not to yet. it either. I like watching us. No. You like watching it? No, I actually think that'd be a fun th- one to watch. Yeah, because Brad weirdest. was probably like, "Hurry, hurry!" Yeah, hurry. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. It was fun. Well, I have a comment for uh, so my we went out to lunch. Uh, my boss and um, I guess the accounting team, and I was I mentioned that we had talked about our uh, Christmas episode, you know, with Brad. Yep, and. He brought up, he's like, I, Christmas movies are tough for me to, you know, enjoy fully. And I said, why? What do you mean? There's iconic ones, right? Yeah. He said, yeah. He said it, well, he said, the ones with specifically Santa Claus. And I said, again, why? He had a traumatic experience? No. He said, it doesn't make any sense. And I said, explain. Yeah. And he says... In every Christmas movie with parents, they don't they are skeptical and they don't believe in Santa, and yet there are Christmas presents the next morning under the tree, and they're just like <laughs> ha 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 like they have no they don't know where that came from, yeah, so he's he just ha- said these parents are either idiots or they're not addressing the elephant in the room, which is presents that they did not purchase that's a that's a great point. And I've never thought about it before, but now every time I watch a Christmas movie where that happens, I'm going to think about that. Yeah, so because I started like thinking of iconic ones, and I'm like, oh my gosh. Elf. Yes. I can't remember if there's parents that are like, oh my gosh. I don't remember either. What's the, what's the one where like the, the like sleigh crashes? <laughs> what was that? Did you hear that? <laughs> yeah, what was that? Uh, Oh, she's on the phone. Oh. Uh, what's the one where the sleigh crashes, like, in Central Park? And they have to, like, use the spirit of Christmas and they all start singing. Isn't that uh, the Grinch? Is it? No. The sleigh crashes in the big tree or something, doesn't it? In the Grinch? Not in Central Park. Well, isn't that what they call it in Whoville? No. That's the Whoville Square, obviously. So, obby. Okay. Everybody knows that. Duh. Okay. Um... Can you even picture what I'm thinking? No, I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it's like, well, yeah, isn't that Elf? It might be Elf. The spirit of Christmas. And like everyone's like, ooh, ooh. And then some... I think Zo- it is Elf. Isn't Zoe Deschanel done? She starts singing like... Is that Zoe Deschanel in that movie? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, it does not look like her. I'll tell you that right now. Huh. She looks hotter in that movie, but... But what? Sorry, I'm just distracted <laughs> by the phone call. <laughs> um, No, she's hotter in that movie. And she's got a like kind of a boyish, like rugged attitude that I like. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Yeah. So yeah, you, you, yeah, yeah. you agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. She's great. Um, uh, New Girl's a great show. Have you ever watched New Girl? I've watched it. I haven't like watched everything about it because I think I think uh, Zoe Deschanel in that show specifically gets annoying after a while. Yeah. She's the same that. oblivious person. It's like. Usually shows people have like, there's like a moral of it, and like the main character learns and it's like oh, and develops. That's how they develop. Mm-hmm. I always feel like she's just like always oblivious, and yeah. that's fine. Yeah. But like I, it got to a point where I was like, I feel like Nick was developing and everyone else was, and Schmidt and everything, and then she was just like. I'm a bimbo and I don't live in the real world. And it's like, ah, oh, I'm kind of funny. Right. And like, it's kind of the same mannerisms that I was like, 
or womanerisms. <laughs> womanerisms. Yeah. So I, I kind of phased it out because I was like, it's not drawing me in. Like Nick kind of set his hooks in me, but then I was like, he was like dating Zoe. Then I'm like, oh god, I loathe her. <laughs> I think that is a that is a unique take on that show that you don't like her character. I think it, most people it's, do. It's not that I don't like her character. It's that it's, she's the same character throughout the entire show. If that makes sense. It does make sense. Speaking um, of uh, TV characters, <laughs> I came up with a list. My top five most iconic TV characters. And I want to get your take on it. So am I going to listen to these? and or I'll, I'll give you all five. And I know one of them. Oh yeah, they're TV. They're not TV. They're TV, not movies. Correct. One of them's going to be uh, Mr. Robot Guy. Uh, Rami Malek as uh, Elliot Alderson. Yep. No. Okay. The, I actually he he's a honorable mention, but um, it's going to be the um, Christian Slater in that same show. No. Okay. Well, I let's no, hear this. Nobody I'm from very Mr. Robot. Curious now. Uh, Kramer from Seinfeld. <laughs> Michael Scott from The Office, That's the American version. Uh, Ron Swanson from Parks and Rec. Fonzie from Happy Days. And SpongeBob SquarePants. Okay. Those are my top five most iconic TV characters. To you or that you think are most iconic to everyone? The, everyone. Okay. I'll agree with Michael Scott. Yeah. I will agree with uh, Kramer. Yeah, I think I think I agree with that. Okay. What about Jerry? <laughs> it's not the same. Was that supposed to be Jerry Seinfeld? Yeah, it was supposed to be. Yeah, it was pretty pathetic, it, but it did not work. Um. Uh, okay. Um. SpongeBob. Fonzie, SpongeBob. Ron Swanson. I wouldn't say Ron. I mean, I love Ron Swanson's character. I don't. I wouldn't consider him iconic for all of television. But okay, uh, do you want to hear my honorable mentions? Maybe you'll want to uh, yep. slide one of them into his spot. Okay. Tyrion Lannister from Game of Thrones. Okay. And Dwight Schrute from The Office. It's funny because I, I. It's almost like. The cast of The Office, I think, could be considered iconic. Like, yeah. its own thing, right? I yeah. Mean, um, they yeah. work so well together. Yeah, they do. It's... And, like, Stanley. Yes. Meredith. 100%. I agree. Creed. Um, oh, my gosh. What what show was I thinking of just now? Well, okay. Here's a... I'm just thinking of the shows I like, which are kind of... Yeah, not... it's hard. It's hard to, like, because I'm not really, like... I don't know... I've probably watched five episodes of Happy Days in my life, but everybody knows the Fonz. Hey. Exactly. Is that him? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I was going to say, um, what about, and I mean, not whatever, but just an icon of the time, um, Bill Cosby. Yeah. Like, he was, like, an iconic person until, like, in recent years when he, you mean like, You mean his character from the show, though? Just, I guess, him. Well, well, yeah, I mean, he was, that was his thing. Mr. Rogers, iconic. Yeah. Um, the other one I thought of maybe oh. was Walter White. Mm, I would agree with that, yeah. He was kind of a big I thought deal. you were going to say the Blue's Clues guy. Steve? Yeah. What was the guy that replaced him? Or was Steve the guy that replaced the no, I think it was. Guy? I want to say Steve was correct. Steve was the OG? Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know. It was know. like Daniel or something. I don't know. Yeah, something stupid, but... Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. You like my list, mostly? Mostly, yeah. Um, again, I I didn't watch a lot of super-duper mainstream television shows. Like, you could argue... Um, I, I wouldn't argue, but like... Wilson from Home Improvement. Yeah. Iconic, I mean... Yeah. I remember when the finale was happening, like... My parents, who didn't really watch the show religiously, they were, like, standing around waiting for it. And because that was the reveal of Wilson's face. No way. I didn't remember that. Yeah, it was the finale. Because that was, like, before the age of, like, Google was big to where, or maybe no one, 
<laughs> One of my friends dressed up as Wilson for Halloween. That's fantastic. He's got like a he he has a like a fence made out of big popsicle sticks that he had in front of his face, and then uh, he cut a hole for straws to put a straw through. Smart man. No, I think uh, I remember. Yeah, that finale. It was just it was before like everyone could Google everything, right? Right. Like you just search a actor's name, and then it's like, oh, that's what he looks like. You know, the, the for the Seinfeld finale, there was like a bunch of stations that just didn't air anything because they're like, what's the point? Everyone's going to be watching the Seinfeld finale. That's awesome. Yeah. I I want to watch the whole Seinfeld saga through. Do it. It's on Netflix now. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Yeah. It's really good. I actually. I I watched it when it was on Hulu a couple years ago, and now I'm re-watching it on Netflix. Good man. It's good funny. Man. I was very close to restarting Mr. Robot, mm -hmm. and I don't know what it was, but I was like, I don't know if I can handle this emotional trajectory upward. Yeah. Because it's like... It's a heavy show. It got really heavy at the end because yeah. I know I was like, "Oh, I'm just here for the ride," but like I was pretty damn invested at toward the like yeah. at the end when yeah. like you and I were like watching it. I forbade you for is that a word? Forbade? Sure. I think Whatever. it is. I forbade you from watching it without me. Yeah, I did anyway. Yeah, because well, uh, it know. was on at nine o'clock on Sunday nights, so. I thought I the last few episodes I thought I watched with you. You might I think maybe the finale we watched together. I think mm -hmm. we did. Yeah, cuz I remember you didn't cry. Oh, I cried heavy. Yeah, you did. Um, yeah, and we would always talk. Who's your was that your buddy Alex? Yeah. And we talked like whatever, it was not the finale, but other episodes we were like, "Oh, it could be this, it could be that." Yeah. I, I think this. Yeah. And I think I was always down the road of like traditional cinema mm -hmm. like oh it's gonna be this kind of twist ha 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 was wrong every time yeah it's a great show if you haven't watched mr robot it's my favorite watch show it. of all time it's on amazon and it's only four seasons watch so. it in reverse probably don't do that that seems like you're gonna be very confused that's fine um well do you got anything tim or should i just go into my linkedin Literally all, uh, all I had bit. written on here was my top five TV characters. Cool. All right. I'll just go into my LinkedIn uh, bitching. And <laughs> the last thing I think could, was this morning. So, uh, yeah, we can talk about that. But I thought this was funny. What is this? On LinkedIn. Um, oh, no. Okay. This is this was on a Facebook post. Oh, wow. And I screenshot it because I was like, this is... <laughs> I, I I think I have a problem with things that have so many likes and track like tr they get traction. Yeah. And I think they're so absurd. It's one thing if someone just posted it and it's got like three likes, it's like, okay, like no one cares. But it's like got seven thousand, you're like seven thousand people actually believe this stuff. So you're this is the thing from Facebook, so not LinkedIn, but arguably is LinkedIn. This person Whoa, says Are you anti LinkedIn? No no no. This post is, I think, geared for LinkedIn. Gotcha. It could have been, and they just posted it on Facebook because they were like, Ugh, They probably LinkedIn. did both. <laughs> Gotta farm yeah. those clicks. All right. So this post says, two days is not enough turnaround. Re recoup time from the five-day, 40-hour work week. It really isn't. Let's just stop right there. Two days, 40 hours. Like a forty-hour work week, you don't. Two days is not enough for forty hours of work. <laughs> what? I think that's bizarre. I don't know. Do you think that's bizarre? I don't know. All I, all I, my, my point of view. I work four tens, and I get three-day weekends pretty much every weekend. Yeah, and that's it's not amazing. Enough. It's it, not enough. It's I cannot go back. Okay, but what if you had to? If I had to, I could do it, but. I'm but, not going to go back but by those choice. Saturday and Sunday, you don't. Is that enough time to recoup from a nope. 40 hour Cause, work week? Because everyone else works on Fridays. You know what I do on Fridays? Yard work and other things. And I just listen to podcasts all day. Because you're productive best. as hell. It's the best. So, anyway, I just. Anyway, so there's that. And then uh, 
I think it's like <laughs> so scientifically proven that people are more productive on four day work weeks. No, anyway. and I'm not disputing that. I'm just saying like this person saying two days is not enough to recoup from a forty hour work week. And I'm just like, that's bizarre to me. But then there's a comment below it, which I think is great. Well, great in a different way. I know it way. That's because we can't even use them to recoup. We've got to use them to do laundry, dishes, and grocery shop and get out of the house, cleaned up, and carve out some time for friends and family who we haven't seen all week because we've been at work. We don't have we don't get to recover. We just have a never ending list of stuff that needs doing. That's what I do on Fridays. It's sweet. I mean, so with that I'm I just look at that as like Eight hours a day, okay, let's say you wake up at seven, okay? Yep. And then you go to work at, I don't know, nine, five, nine to five job? Sure. Sure. So nine, that's, yeah, that's nine, eight hours. Mm-hmm. What are you, are you going to bed when you go to, go home? Like, what are you doing for when you get home? So let's say you get home at six. Mm-hmm. Let's say okay. Say you go to the gym and say you get home at seven. What do you do for like three hours before you go to bed? What do I do? Or what no, no, no. I'm asking, asking these, these this person who apparently like you can't get anything done because you're always at work for forty hours a week. I I'm just I'm questioning. This is like my reasonability test. Like, what are you doing? Because you you don't have time to do dishes or grocery shop you push a button on a dishwasher i mean you don't even wash the dishes some people do i mean some people do i've been doing... you don't you don't know this person maybe they have to manually wash all their dishes again i'm looking at the scalability of this this post oh it's a tweet 6500 tweets 18000 likes it's like like so they, tweets they screenshot i tweet tweet from and Twitter on Facebook. and posted it on Facebook. Now this is just confusing. Okay. Anyway, so I, I had a problem with that. I just, I'd like to hear everyone's thoughts. Who's listening? Like, is that, am I completely bizarre? Like there, I don't, when I get home, I don't want to do dishes, but I have to do them because I want to clean, eat something out of a clean dish. That's true. Just get takeout every day. Yeah. But that'll be a, that'd be great. Uh, I thought this was funny. This is a LinkedIn <laughs> thing. Sorry, changing gears. Yep, yep. I'd like to hear everyone's thoughts on my, that previous thing. This is funny. Okay, LinkedIn. Reality versus LinkedIn. And it's a crying emoji, emoticon. Reality. I got my driver's license. LinkedIn. I am honored and thrilled to announce that I have been selected among the top five applicants who participated in professional and the most respected exam, which evaluates the skills and ability to operate fuel-based vehicles. I cannot wait to see what the next chapter holds, and I cannot express my appreciation to the Ministry of Transportation, Wendy's, Google, NASA, and my neighbors <laughs> who support me during this difficult journey. <laughs> I thought awesome. that was so beautiful because it's so true. Um, but you <clears throat> love it. I do love it. Um, this one I thought was good. Um, this teeters on what I think. Does it belong on LinkedIn or does it not? Mm -hmm. Um, this post, I, I like the post. That's why I, I did it, but I just like question that. Right. Mm -hmm. Joy is when you laugh. Joy is when they make you laugh. Joy is event driven and short lived. Happiness is when you smile. Happiness is when life makes you smile. Happiness is never event driven and always long lived. My mentor says joy is what you have. Happy is what you are. A laugh dies in the alley. A smile goes a long way. I think she's right. Do you agree? Anyway, I thought that was a, a, a kind of a cool post, but I again, I don't know if that really belongs on LinkedIn. Yeah, it's a weird, it's a weird LinkedIn post. <clears throat> so I liked it, but I didn't really. I don't know if it belongs there. If it was Twitter, would you have retweeted it? I don't do Twitter, so it, probably not. <laughs> what the heck? Okay, so then just a hater. Here's something that I don't think belongs on LinkedIn. Uh, I don't even want to say it because it makes me sound like a crass asshole, but. Do it. Let it out. Okay. 
Six, six months ago, I wanted to end my life. Instead, I went out for a drink like so many other times before that. That night, I ran my mouth a little too much, went to the, went to get stitches and ended up in a mental health facility. I decided I didn't want to drink anymore. Six months ago was the last time I had a drink. God delivered me from alcohol. And since then, my life has been great. Uh, I know I've posted this a few times, but it's 180 days. It's a milestone. I'm going to finish the post, and then I just, whatever. <laughs> and I know there are others like me. If you read this, just know that sobriety can be hard, but it's well worth it today because of that same hard journey I want to live. I want to believe. I believe in you. So I think this is tremendous. This is fantastic. This is a Facebook. This should be a Facebook post. Yeah. On a professional LinkedIn platform, I don't know if this is... Like, I'm happy for this guy. Don't get me wrong. Like, this is great. Mm -hmm. I just don't... If I'm a professional, it's like, great. It is weird. Tell me, like, that's not a factor when you're thinking about hiring someone. It really seems like... Like, I don't spend much time on LinkedIn. I don't spend much time on Facebook or anything, but uh, it seems like LinkedIn is basically just new Facebook. Okay. Meta? Yeah, Meta. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. No. Okay. So, anyway, I'd like to hear everyone's, all the listeners' thoughts on, like, if this type of, if I'm wrong. I just want to know if I'm, like, if I'm... I think completely in left field or if I'm like, are we on in the baseline or am I out? You know, like, I just want to know. I think maybe the fact that you got LinkedIn tattooed on your leg is transforming the LinkedIn network. And now it's like bringing all these bad non-professional actors into LinkedIn and it's all your fault. I, I ooze professionalism. It's in my skin, in my blood. There's um, no way that's true. 100%. Okay, so here's the thing that is up for debate, and I'm curious about your thoughts. This is another Dan Price post. Again, I agree with Tim. This is like baiting people to like post and comment. Again, yeah. what I what disturbs me is how many how much traction this guy gets. But that's the reason why I screenshot it. Because I almost responded, but then I was like... Have you ever thought, maybe I'm wrong? I thought that, but then I read the question or read his post and I'm like, like this specific post, I'll read it. And I want you to, I want to hear your reaction. Can I read it? Sure. Well, but you'll see like my comment below it, but yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, the full, feel the power. <clears throat> I won't read the bottom part. Okay. Don't do it. How come it's always, if you can't pay your bills, get a better job but never, if you can't find workers, pay a better salary. I'll tell you why, Dan. Those are two completely opposite different questions. That's true. For, and this is what I was about to post. Okay, if you find this post and like read what people say, people are like applauding him. Oh my gosh, yeah, great. This is a, I'm like, hold on. One is individual, like living within or beyond your means. And another is an organizational question. When an organization can't find people to work or people are quitting, that the second question is what you ask. Yeah. I can't find people. Maybe I should pay people more. Or treat them better. Like, those are... So how come it's always, if you can't pay your bills, get a better job, but never, if you can't find workers, find better, <laughs> pay a better salary? Those are... I, those are, don't even make sense. Like, help me understand this, because it doesn't make sense to me. I don't know what to Again, say. Again, listeners, I want to hear your thoughts, because I feel like I'm either going insane in a sane world, or I'm <laughs> sane in a crazy world. I just don't know which one it is yet. Why can't you be insane in an insane world? <sighs> That's well, how I feel like I am sometimes. Well, if you're insane in an insane world, aren't you just sane in a sane world? Not necessarily. No. You get opposite levels of insanity. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, in other news, I upgraded to the Pixel 6. I am now powerful as hell. Can I see it? How does? Uh, have you noticed like it seems smoother when you're scrolling and stuff? Yeah, I initially turned off like the refresh rate rate as super high, 
And then I was like, well, why did I get a premium phone if I'm not going to like keep it super duper? Yeah, so. you got to turn it on. So yeah, I mean, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's a huge, I mean, rip the bandaid off. Cause I was running on the pit pixel two XL. Yep. And so it's kind of, it's a slightly bigger screen. This um, is bigger than the XL slightly. Well, it's, it's taller. I think the XL yeah. is a little wider. It's too big for me. That's what she said. Uh, it does. It's, I think it's like, it looks like it's just as wide as my iPhone 13, but that's yeah, cool. It's definitely yeah. taller. Definitely I mean, taller. I, I mean, the, the assistant, all the cool things are cool about it. Um, that I like, I like the, I love, like I can turn on, um, it's called focus mode, which it, I pick the apps. I don't want any notifications from mm -hmm. for a certain time frame. So when I'm at work from whatever, eight to four, I have zero mm -hmm. notifications. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously I still have my timers for when I do use apps. What sucks is when I, I'm in the middle of a LinkedIn and then like my screen goes gray. Like that's my one minute warning. I'm like, crap, crap, crap. I got to read as fast as possible. LinkedIn. Yeah. My phone, uh, it does kind of the same thing where like if I have my alarm set for five thirty or whatever, eight hours before that, it'll stop notifying me. Or like, I think it gives me like half an hour, even more that like wind down time. And then eight hours before it stops sending me notifications. It's kind of nice. Okay. I like it. Yeah. It's a yeah. I'm I'm glad I did it. I I got some Pixel or what is it? Pixel Buds A. I don't know. Whatever. It's the commoner Pixel Buds. The, those came with the phone for free. So oh, really? Nice. Shipping separate and um. Yeah, I don't know. I just it's. I feel bad for all the, the normal Android folks that don't. You know, they have to wait for all the updates. They have to losers. You know, I mean, I don't want to say that, but. I'll say it. I'm not scared. I had I had Pixel phones, two two phones before this one. This was my this mm. was my Android phone journey. 2011, I got a HTC Thunderbolt. It was the first 4G phone on Verizon. Then I got a Samsung Galaxy S3. Then I got a LG G3, and then I got a Pixel One. And then I got a Pixel Three, so I had I had uh, Android phones for ten years before I got my iPhone. I can't wait till you come back to the 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 correct side. I don't think it's gonna happen. We'll see. Okay. Well, besides the point. Cool. I'm happy for you. Thank you. If you're happy. So we went hunting. Uh, Brad and I and a few of our other friends. There's five of us total. We shot exactly zero birds. So that was fun. But we did spend a lot of time walking in the woods. Brad's dog has like gone through training to to hunt, and that was really fun. Like Brad and I just were off on our own, and for most of the time, and then the other three were off on their own. But it was sweet. We uh, the very first morning we were going out to go hunting, we passed a sign on the road that said elk crossing, and Brad's like, "There's elk here in like northern Wisconsin." We literally County. like pass the sign, turn the corner, and there's two giant elk right in the middle of the street. <laughs> it was funny. That's sick. That's coincidental. Yes, it was. They're huge. They're like as tall as like my friend's truck. Like just the body. The antlers are even taller. <laughs> Dope. Pretty crazy. These are monsters. Big boys. What are the things up in? Uh, are they elk or are they? Are they reindeer? Most... Reindeer up in uh, Canada. They probably have elk. They might have reindeer too. I don't okay, know. it's like I know they're just enormous. My my uncle shot one. And I was like, I see the picture, and I'm like, holy crap! That thing looks like it belongs. Pull on a sleigh full of presents. I saw in the middle of nowhere in North Dakota, on like oh, there's some back farm road. Oh, yeah. There was a guy like with a big tractor with like forks on the front, like a forklift, you know. Yeah. And it had the forks way up in the air. And he was pulling something out of the ditch. And we were far enough away. North Dakota is super flat. So, like, we couldn't tell what they were doing. I thought maybe, like, somebody had gone into the ditch, like, in their car. And they were pulling the car out. We got closer. It was a bull moose. 
It was okay. huge. The forks had to be in like 20 feet in the air, holding on to the, like lifting up the legs was it so dead? they could clean it. Yeah. Oh, like, I, they, I think they shot it. But, oh, okay. Uh, it was crazy. It was like, I couldn't believe how big that, that animal was. Yeah. I. Yeah. Part of me wants to like move up to Alaska, but then it's like. Then you're in Alaska. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't be that fun in the winter. It'd be fun in the summer. I oh think. my gosh, yeah. Nope. I'm going deer hunting next weekend. Where? Uh, up at my cabin. Northern Minnesota. Oh. What's the address? Uh, one, two, three. Mind your own business. Drive. Avenue. Oh, drive. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, I get it. Okay, cool. No, it's up, it's up near, uh, kind of near Bemidji. Oh, that was one, another thing I was going to say. Sorry. You keep talking about your hunting excursions. Yeah, it's pretty fun. I got lost in the woods once. We told that story last week. Uh, Not much else to say. We live, have like a little shack. Keep going. I don't know what else to say. It's uh, sometimes we see deer. Sometimes we get to clean them and eat venison. Usually not, though. Usually we just sit in the woods. Uh, you look like you're struggling. Kind of. New phone, you don't know how to operate No, it. it's not that. Oh, here it is. Okay. So I've been sending uh, emails to my senator about the... Oh, the, I thought you were going to say yourself. No. Uh, in regards to the... We talked briefly on it about the, the banking situation of $600 and yeah. stuff. Yeah. And I re remember, if you go back to that episode, I had said, what I want them to do is get rid of this thing altogether, not change the dollar amount. Yeah. Well, they changed the dollar amount. Is that an option to just get rid of it? No, of course not. No, I didn't think so. But I changed my, my letter from... So, <laughs> that's another thing i got to send. Um. Anyway, uh, if I can find it. I was not prepared. Sorry. Um. Anyway, I talked to at the board meeting last night with my association, mm -hmm. there's a lady who works at a bank and I was talking with her and she said, this is creating so much more work, uh, loop, red tape, all this stuff for banks to even report on. Yeah. And she said, even so, like, cause they changed the threshold from $600 uh, to 10,000. Yeah. That's aggregate. She's like, if you transfer, the, I thought that was already the law, that like transactions over a certain amount, cash deposits oh, get really? flagged, and there's other things no, like it's like any transaction. So, yeah. So she was saying like it's aggregate. So she said if you transfer like five grand from your savings to your checking and then pay your credit card five grand, that triggers it and it sends the data to the IRS or whatever. What is the time frame in like one day? No, within a year. So if you transact more than ten thousand dollars in a year, it gets yeah. So reported. and the, yeah. So this is this is That's what she insane. she was, was saying because she's a works at the bank. She said, first off, it creates all this work for banks, and she said specifically small banks that don't have the capacity or whatever. But she said mm -hmm. also there's going to be so much data that the IRS is accumulating where they can't even use it. Yeah, like it's going to be worthless. And this is what that stupid email from my congressman says they're trying to like support this thing which while i understand it i know what this is coming from i suspect i should say whatever blah 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 americans use the honor system to self-report their income and deductions to the irs and according to the recent reports as much as a 166 billion in taxes owed are never paid where does that never come from and why do they suspect like what what I when they say honor system, companies have to, if unless like, this is what I don't understand. Your employer reports how much they paid you, so the IRS gets a, a statement from the your company. Yeah. And then you, they tie it out to your return. If you don't file a return, it creates a flag, and then they like audit you or whatever. Right. Same with your independent contractor, a ten ninety nine. Over six hundred dollars. That's like the IRS has one side, 
they're looking for the other. I guess it's so, like if you're running a cash business, like. Well, and even so, like cash, you can't really. Even so, you can't even. Do I? I think this is a crack, an attempt to crack down on crypto. That's what I think this is. Uh, yeah, it could be, but I don't know why they would. Why wouldn't they just go and through the exchanges that have everyone's information anyway? Then That's a good question. Banks. Well, so and why do this at all? That's so. My big thing is I still don't understand. Like they're saying this, this will help them collect 166 billion. I think the reason senators and Congress people are like behind it is because they're probably looking at it like that's a chunk of a bill that I want, you know? Yeah. Like, oh, I want this passed. Well, we can't fund it with the current budget. Yeah. Well, when we get 166 billion from this stupid thing. Right. And they don't really care whether or not they actually get 166 billion from it. They're right. just saying they're using it as justification for. Right. Yeah. Spending. And that, and that's exactly it. I just, I don't know. And I think they, they're only adding like 865 jobs at the irs <laughs> and it's like what the heck you needed those jobs like 15 years ago what you, i mean you needed those already yeah so i i just i don't know it was really interesting to hear i'm not well versed in all this stuff but i was my when my banks are emailing me saying hey this is a big thing that and they're like just saying they think it's more an invasion of privacy. They're obviously they don't want to do the extra work that is involved with it, right? Because they don't really they have to like hire people and all that crap. Ultimately, just to report to the IRS, not even like it doesn't add value. Yeah, fees are going to come up. Where are the fees going to come from? Probably us. You know, like the yeah. bank. It's, yeah. So I just hearing that perspective and um. I don't know. I I edited my letter that my credit union said, hey, we want to send this for you. What do you think? And I was like, edit. And I'm like, I just said. Like, because your credit union was opposed to it? Yeah. Because of they the extra some, work? That's what I was trying to pull up. They had a very strongly worded, um, ah, I'm not going to do it, but um, they had a very strongly worded, like, generic email. And I was like, oh, crap. That's like straight savage, yo. And then I added a little something to it, like, yeah, I said, don't change the dollar amount. Get rid of this thing altogether. That's what I said. Because, hmm. and the the lady that I was talking to with that worked at a bank was saying as well, like, a lot of stuff, like, internal transfers, that flags on the bank side. So the bank actually addresses it internally because they mm. want to mitigate their risk. Yeah. And so, like, and I'm just, I was just saying, like, yeah, could I just create automatic transfers between my two savings accounts to automatically transfer $1,000 every other day? And that would <laughs> aggregate in like five days? Yeah. And she's like, she's I can't remember what she said, but she was just like, I mean, it's like, that's how it, right now it like could be like that. Yeah. And I know like we have a bank examiner person who's, really and he's up for that he likes it i don't know yeah do you see the talk about taxing unrealized gains there's talk about that yeah what so like the oh my god they're like janet yellen was saying that uh they want to explore taxing unrealized gains for ultra rich people but yeah it's like very much gonna be one of those things that they're like, oh, we are, we're taking in this much money. Let's lower the level, you know, where they're going to start taxing unrealized gains for everybody. But like you think about it. So, OK, here's a little here's a little economics lesson for anybody listening. So people like Elon Musk that have like that are super rich because they have so much equity in companies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They don't sell their stock. They borrow against it. So. He never has realized gains, meaning he never gets taxed on the stock that he has. So what they want to do is they say, oh, this year the value of your stock went up $10 billion. You owe us taxes on that value. Even though you didn't sell. Even though you didn't sell it. So he he hasn't realized his gains. But 
they want the, the tax money from it because they know he has no reason he needs to sell it. But what it's going to do is going to force people to sell their stock because where are they going to get the money to to pay their taxes unless they sell their equity and it's going to just destroy the economy like it just so, it's like nobody thought it through they're just like oh this is a way we could make money no these are uh, i mean this is the first i've hearing of it and so this is a genuine reaction from me um this is a bunch of idiots who don't understand how things work in government that just are like how do we get more money and they just throw something out there and they don't think it through yeah. second third fourth layer like there's a reason like I'm a huge advocate for the Laffer curve and people they're they're critics on both sides. I I think it's great because it it we've seen it. So the lot do you know what the Laffer curve is? No. Laffer curve. You drop capital gains tax, you lower it. I'm not going to say rich people but more affluent people and just people in general, they are more they trade more. Yeah. Which cre- creates capital gains that are taxable. We should we should explain what capital gains. Are. Capital gains. So, uh, you buy a stock for a hundred dollars. The stock goes up to two hundred dollars. Now that's a hundred dollar unrealized gain. That's not taxable. Right. But if you sell, that's a hundred dollar gain. You that is taxable. And depending on what tax bracket you are in, you get hit either hard, somewhat hard, or very hard. So then there's there's short term capital gains. Which is like you get taxed regular basically income. as income, yeah. Yep. And long term capital gains, if you hold the stock for over a over year. a year, you get taxed a lot less. So it's incentivizing yeah. people to so hold for all the for easy math, we'll just say short term capital gains. If you're in the whatever tax bracket, you get taxed at your normal income. What you get normally get taxed for your uh your paycheck, right at the end of the year. Uh, long term capital gains capital gains let's say you're just a commoner like me uh the lowest rate let's say it's 15 percent. so of that hundred dollars that i made and i sell it it's a capital gain it's long term a year in a day fifteen dollars goes to the government or i owe that to the government yeah so um so you, what you're saying is they would go after or they would get a, a slice of my pie that i haven't sold yet right and if I don't have the cash, which if you're heavily invested, you don't have cash. It's all in investments, a.k.a. Right. Warren Buffett. Right. Like he makes $100,000 in cash a year. Everything else is in investments. Right. I mean, so. And, and like I, I haven't really seen um, people like deep diving into it, like economists and stuff. Mm-hmm. But uh, like, how would it work for like unrealized gains on houses? Like you buy a house and it doubles in value but you haven't sold it like do you have to pay taxes on unrealized gains of like a house i mean it seems there's so many different perspectives too and like ways to look at it too i mean i i look at things like property taxes i think are i i think they're atrocious for what they are i mean you pay tax like you can never that never goes away Mm -hmm. so and it's what they assess your property value at so if you buy land, you know, and it's paid for, well, you still owe tax on it because, and I get it, like, it pays for roads and everything like that, but I think yeah. that can be... And schools. You know, there's different ways to look at everything. I, I guess with the... Oh, let me explain the Laffer curve. I didn't get there. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I didn't interrupt you. No, no, no. We were going down a rabbit hole. That was cool. cool. Um, Laffer curve, so... uh. When the ta- capital gains tax goes up, affluent rich people or just common people, because it's smart and tax accountants advise this, generally speaking, don't trade. Stop trading because then you'll realize those gains. Mm-hmm. Whereas when the capital gains tax drops, that's when they're like, yeah, you can start, you know, if you want to get into something different, sell. And it's like, oh, because your, your capital gains tax is lower. You're talking short-term capital gains, right? Short-term or long-term. Okay. It, the lowering the rate increases people's uh, trading. Yeah. So, Because so, they're like, oh, I actually, I'm not paying as much. Right. So 
But what happens is when everyone does that, the tax revenue goes up. Mm. Whereas when, when the, see, there's a misconception where people say raise tax rates, that that equals more money. That's not the case. So you're saying lowering the tax rate actually brings in more tax revenue. Correct. That's the Laffer curve. That's, hmm. that's the economic principle there. And, um, and that's, is that like a, like a theoretical thing or is it practical, like measured? I think it has been measured hmm. like over, you know, whatever, a couple decades, like economic data or whatever. Hmm. So the thing is, is, but it also makes logical sense. If your ta- capital gains tax is like 50% and you have a hundred dollar gain, why would you sell it to get into something else? Right. Unless you knew that new thing was going to surpass a 50% hit right. that you take right now in the shorts. I don't know. Is there's, I, I'm a big believer in, creating incentives yeah like when you pass a law it shouldn't be like what does it do it should be what incentive does it create Mm. that's what i think and i think that's it's pretty very prevalent with with lots of crazy laws i mean you know you raise taxes on the rich well the rich still don't pay taxes well why is that it's because they have they pay people very smart people how to freaking get around it right and it's like you can't close every loophole, otherwise there will never be a rich person ever again. And that is scary. Mm-hmm. To me, yeah, there, there's no incentives. There, exa- that's what I think, yeah. Hmm. I, I, going back, and this is high, super high level, and maybe I'm going down three phases, <laughs> three levels or whatever, but I, talking about the, the, the $600, now $10,000 threshold or whatever for, banks to report going back to that conversation real quick yeah i think the more they start getting into our personal stuff and overstepping privacy that's going to push people into the crypto network yeah not so much like currency i don't like saying currency anymore because people people hear that and mean think it's money, which they think they think cryptocurrency. The only application is replacing the U.S. dollar. Yeah, and that's I, I think that's wrong. It's it's yeah. so it's so misleading to where I just say the crypto network or yep. like Ethereum network. That's yep. where I'm like, that's you know, honestly, it's like regulate the hell out of everything so then we could get there faster. That's that's what I say. Yeah, and um, and I think it's a it's when you understand or know the potential, it's so. Uh, it's like a refreshing concept. Like yeah. you're like, wow, I'm like free. You, you feel free. Yeah. I feel free thinking about it. I'm very much a privacy advocate. And I think like, yeah, the, the whole $600 thing is just the government overstepping. Like, Any dollar amount to me is yeah, overstepping. Yeah. They already have like regulations for like, if you deposit more than $10,000 in cash, they have to report it to the IRS. And that cr- yeah. triggers like a, red flag that they have to monitor you know so it's like and that's good Mm -hmm. you know yeah who's depositing that much cash because i didn't think about it then you have your small business you present your tax return and it's like oh you're barely making any money however you have all these cash deposits what the hell that doesn't Mm -hmm. make sense doesn't Mm -hmm. add up whatever so like that's a good thing but this additional thing overstepping privacy like in I think we talked about this when we talked about it before is I just, it's not that I loathe the people that think this way, but I, I wish people had a different way of thinking about it was I have nothing to hide. It doesn't affect me. That's not the point. Right. The point is that they came up with this saying we want to know. It's, it's, it only gets worse and worse. Like it's not going to, it can't, they're not going to give you pieces of your privacy back. Correct. Yes. It's not, it's like once this is how it starts. That's what I when I talk about when I hear about these like regulations that I'm everyone's like, ah, it doesn't matter, you know. Yeah. Like I have nothing to hide. It doesn't affect me. I'm not rich. It's like you're missing the point. It starts at like a small portion of people who are affected, and then it's like, well, let's extend it to this group, mm-hmm. that group. Oh, you have three cars that are gas and not electric. Oh, we don't like that anymore. You know, like it's like the, where do you draw the line is really what it is and yeah. and that's where I think again, I'm these politicians 
have a they have it so easy to where they don't live in the real world where they just like oh i serve in congress one time and i have an uh indefinite pension for life yeah you know like so they don't live in the real world where they're like oh they try to empathize with like commoners like me and you mm-hmm. it's like where we work 40 hours a week <laughs> you work 40 hours a week yeah i work more yeah you're an overachiever it's not like it isn't that funny like when people are like i work more than 40 hours it's like is that an accolade do you feel great about that i don't like yeah it's not that i don't feel great about it i'm i'm i love where i work i'm proud but it's like who's trying to like oh i work longer than you yeah it's like oh cool i don't know it's like do it's i like, like when, fist bump you it's like when people brag about not sleeping very much okay that's me though <laughs> you sleep you go to sleep at like nine o'clock yes that's true last night i went to bed at 10 can you believe it that's insane yeah i was uh what was it oh, i was Crazy doing some night. theraflu you ever done that stuff it's no. like it's like apple cinnamon uh it's like a powder with like uh um acetaminophen or something Is that like it? for your sinuses yeah it kind of clears you out and everything mm. um but it's like you you put it in hot water or put it in water heat it up doesn't matter mm. but it's kind of like a, it's almost like an apple cider it's really great um mm. it's like medicine though and i mean game changer it's way cheaper than day quill and night quill and all that stuff um Good anyway. to know yeah theraflu i i'm a huge advocate i am not sponsored by them but uh yet yet wait till i get a qr code on my other thigh can you believe people actually listen to this we just talked about taxes for like 20 minutes <laughs> people listen to this some <laughs> well i i enjoy feedback i wish i wish i heard more yeah constructive it's, it's welcome yeah i mean you could tell us that you just hate us but but that's just one more view on our youtube and then you know it's like Cha ching share it share it with your family and uh again i like the fact checkers like correct us correct me yeah because i'm like i mean yeah we're shooting from the hip no script. Mm-hmm. Just out for a rip. Well, what do you say? Do you got more material? or I'm all out. All right. We're going to go hit some Thai food. Um, oh, yummy. It's good. Do you like Thai food? I love Thai food. What is it you like about Thai food? The flavor. Do you like curry? No. Communist. Wow. I'm not going to take this slander. All right. Well, thanks for listening, uh, Couch Beers uh, Republic. Couch Beers Tribe. Tribe. Roll Tribe. Roll Tribe. All right. Peace. Love you. Here's some foot feet. Bye. Bye. Bye.